Hello everyone, welcome to today's video lecture for uh, Block 2, Engineering 225. So we're going to now talk, we've, we've just completed talking about inductors and capacitors, and now we're going to put them into work, put them to work in, in AC circuits. So this is our next big topic, steady state sinusoidal analysis. So all of our circuits up to this point have been DC. So we've basically just had DC sources, current sources, resistors, and voltage sources. Now we're going to allow AC sources. And as we'll see, the methods of analysis are pretty much identical. So we've used node voltage, mesh current, the basic ones, KCL, KBL, Ohm's law, all that still applies for AC circuits. So all the same analysis. What's different is the nature of the arithmetic. So we're doing complex this time, and instead of real. Okay, so where we'll start is with a quick review of sinusoidal currents and voltages. And for that, let's, uh, let's let our uh, voltage variable, V of T, note the T, this time varying, equal to a constant, Vm times cos omega t plus theta. Vm is its magnitude or peak value. Theta is the phase angle given in radians. And omega is the radian frequency, in also in radians, but radians per second. So let's get a look at what this looks like. So let's sketch this waveform and identify these three key parameters. So that's the best sinusoid I could draw by freehand. And let's label these key parameters. So starting with the magnitude, this is the peak, the peak value. And it's likewise at minus Vm on the bottom side. And what we're drawing now is one complete period. So from one point on the waveform to the same point on the waveform later. So one period later. So the period is capital T. And notice that the cosine wave doesn't start on the voltage axis. It's delayed a little bit. That represents the phase angle theta. So we say that this sinusoid is periodic with period T. And one complete period is over 2 pi radians. So we can express it this way, omega t evaluated at, at one period is 2 pi. And this gives omega t over 2 pi. And if we turn that around, one period is 2 pi over omega. Now we often refer to the radian frequency as just simply frequency. And it, it is physically nothing more than the number of, of complete periods or cycles every second. <clears throat> and its relationship to the period is simply the reciprocal. And the unit is hertz, frequency in hertz. And the abbreviation is capital H little z. Okay, so then if we, we further manipulate this, we have the radian frequency then is 2 pi over the period. And so now we have an important relationship between omega and f. So I'm omega, the radian frequency, is 2 pi times the frequency in hertz. Now notice that we've, that we've used a cosine and not a sine in this expression. And there's a good reason for that. It, it will generally make life a little bit easier for us ahead in, in sim simplifying the mathematics. And certainly they're related with each other. Uh, so sine is basically just a, a phase shifted version, version of a cosine and vice versa. So a sine is uh, the cosine with a phase shift of minus pi over 2 or 90 degrees. And so that's how we refer to a sine, and that's how we'll be using it. It has a phase angle of minus 90 degrees, or minus pi over 2. One very common way to express voltages and currents 
and we do this all the time without really thinking about it, is in terms of what we call root mean square values. So you remember back to our, our first lab beyond the soldering lab that we made measurements of AC voltages using peak or peak to peak. So those are peak to peak voltages. And so that's certainly one way to express them. And the peak value, if you remember, is the, is the capital V sub M constant in front of the cosine wave for our time domain or our time domain um, expression for voltage. So, um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about root mean square. We made one of those measurements as well. And at the, at the basis of this calculation is, is uh, the power in a resistor. Okay, and we're going to consider this power over one period. Now, since since the voltage and current are all, all periodic, so we can cal we can do this over one period. So it's the same over all the periods. So we calculate power, instantaneous power in this case, very it's in the usual way. It's voltage times current, and for a resistor, the voltage. Um, uh, is used uh, to calculate the current. So V over R is the current, so we get V squared over R. So a familiar expression for voltage. So the energy now, if you remember, and we'll use the symbol E, capital E sub T, T for period, is, is the integral of the power, and we'll do this also over one period. So once again, where the power, instantaneous power, is V squared over R. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're going to, to look at is the average power. So the average power over one period. So the way we will calculate that is simply the, uh, the energy over that period divided by time. So the, and the time is, is, is simply one period. And so if we fill in the rest of it, it's 1 over T times the, uh, the energy over one period. And, and so the average power then is, is simply that. <clears throat> okay, an alternate, way, an alternate way of expressing this is this way. So once again, now, what we're doing here is we're going to do an operation. We're going to square it, and then we're going to take the square root of it. So and essentially, we're not doing anything to it. So we're squaring a square root. But the reason we're doing that is to flush out this idea of RMS voltage. Okay, and so it's this thing on top, in, in the square brackets, which will be our RMS voltage. So if we pull that out, this is what we have. So 1 over t times the integral from 0 to t over 1 period, v squared over v squared of t. And so then here's where the name comes from. So there's the root, which is the overall square root side, the mean, which is essentially everything inside the square root, and the square is the square on the voltage. So RMS, root mean square. Okay, this is a very common, very common way to express voltages and currents for AC values. So in the real world, of course, we're using uh, sinusoidal voltages and currents. And so AC voltages in our everyday language, basically, is, is specified in RMS, not peak. For example, in our household or any of the wall sockets around, these are typically in the range of about 110 volts to 120 volts, but that is RMS. And, and the other thing too, power. When we talk about power in an AC circuit, such as, you know, a 100 watt light bulb that we might screw into a socket, if you can get 100 watt light bulbs. So, in so it is average power, not instantaneous power. So when we have a rating on, say, a light bulb of 100 watts, it's referring to 100 watts of average power. So again, now we're dealing with sinusoidal voltages. 
So remember way back when we just we defined AC and DC. DC was a constant. AC was anything else, everything else. So for, for non-constant voltages of currents. So we're going to stick with sinusoidal voltages. And, and so if we substitute in our expression for V of T, which was a cosine wave, into our expression for VRMS, and we're not going to show it here, but if we do enough uh, simplification, we can boil this down to a simple relationship. And remember, this is what we used in lab number one as well to confirm the relationship between RMS and peak voltage. So this is sinusoidal RMS voltage. So, for example, household voltages. Suppose we have a voltage uh, in your home, so if you were to measure it, uh, maybe with a, an RMS uh, voltmeter, and you measure 120 volts RMS. So what do we what do we really have? So if we put it on an oscilloscope, what would we see? Obviously a cosine wave, and its its amplitude or its peak peak is 120 times root two. And, of course, the frequency will be 2 pi times 60 hertz, so 50 hertz in Europe and, and elsewhere. And, and so the peak voltage at, at an outlet that's in your home is 169.7 volts. Okay, so let's do a further example. So sort of to put it all together now. So let's say we have a voltage... 10 times the sine of, of this, uh, 1000 pi t plus 30 degrees. So this is in terms of a sine. Okay, so first order of business in general, as, as we'll see coming up very soon, is we're going to need to convert that to a cosine. And so that's what we'll do here. And let's identify the other key parameters here. So let's give angular frequency in radians per second, frequency in hertz, and the average power dissipated in a 10 ohm resistor. So here's our starting point. This is our the expression for V of T. And so let's convert it to a cosine. And so remember what we do there is simply subtract 90 degrees of phase. And so let's let's identify the angular frequencies, the coefficient of T or time, so a thousand pi. And this is in radians per second. And if we divide that by 2 pi, we get the frequency in hertz, which is 500. <clears throat> and so the RMS voltage now is, once again, just simply the peak value, 10, 10 volts, divided by root 2, so 7.071 RMS volts. And the average power, and so this is the RMS voltage squared divided by R, And so this works out to simply 5 watts. 5 watts of average power. Now let's get an idea of what this average power looks like in terms of the instantaneous power. Because the power is changing all the time because the voltage and the current are sinusoidal. So ultimately it's the average we're interested in, but let's, let's get a, an idea of what this looks like. So here's our expression for instantaneous power, which is just simply V squared of T over R, which is comes from just voltage times current. And plug in our numbers, we get 100 over 10, cos squared now. And we'll make use of a, a very handy trig identity here. So for if we have a cos squared, we can replace it with this simple expression here, a half times 1 plus cos 2x. So if we apply that to our, our instantaneous power, we get 5, a constant, plus 5 times a cosine wave now of double the frequency and double, double the phase angle. So if we sketch this thing, it's always positive. Notice that this, this is always positive. Okay, and so it, it peaks out at 10 volts, or sorry, 10 watts, but right down the middle, the average value of this cosine wave is halfway. That is about one complete lecture hour. 
So in summary, what we did today was, base, was talk about uh, voltage and current expressed in terms of cosine waves and the, the key parameters involved, peak, peak values of voltage or current, angular frequency, and of course, phase angle. And we also talked about sin expressing sinusoidal voltages and currents as RMS values and how it's important to use average power instead of instantaneous power when we talk about the power in a device. So what's coming up is um, now we're going to start doing KVL and KCL, so back to the basics in an AC circuit. So what that's going to involve, unfortunately, is some complex numbers and phasers. So we'll take that up next.